Wulu Olu. Wallet of Life. Hi, hi sis, Wale, <laughs> I'm going to be in your inbox, so I'm going to be in your DM, Wale, I'm going to be in your DM, <laughs> it's so good to see you fam, I'm good bro, I'm good, <laughs> that's my brother from way back, my Usu people, I'm good fam, I'm going to be in your DM, so everyone, thank you so much for joining today. Coffee is on standby to join us by 2 p.m. I'm just waiting for the time to get closer so I can invite her. My name is Esther Ijeweri. I am the founder of Women of Rubies and I'm also your host for today on the Get Talking with Esther show. It goes live on Instagram, but it's indicated on YouTube. So you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Esther Ijeware, to watch past editions of the program. Yes, Kafi is going to be here, Guinness World Record holder. You know, easy. It is not easy. <laughs> she's going to be here today. She's on standby. She's in my DM waiting for me to invite her. And we're going to be talking about the business of dance. The business of dance. I mean... Oh, Silami, my people are here today. I'm so happy. <laughs> I am blessed. I have people. <laughs> Thank you so much, my people. Thank you for taking out time um, for, for joining. So I'm just going to go ahead and send an invitation to Kafi. So we prep up a little bit before we get right into the show. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, my sister Nifemi, amazing, amazing vendor in Montreal. That's um, one of the, you know, inspiring women in Canada. You should follow her. Um, I, I might be, you know, we, we are planning a little, little something soon. Um, for our sisters in Canada, especially those in Montreal. So, yes. And um, that's my amazing sister. Please follow her. She gives visibility to, you know, a lot of people in the French-speaking horizon in Canada. Yes, merci beaucoup. Um, bonjour. <laughs> my sister, no sabio. I don't know be that. At the one where I know I be that. How are you all doing? I hope you had an amazing week. I mean, it's it's been a roller coaster of emotions for me. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of information that I had to consume this week. Um, losing two people who are very close to me. Oh, I mean, one was very close to me. The other person, well, they won't be close to me again in Jesus' name. I mean, they're gone now. But I mean, um. It was indeed a very emotional week for me. And then, you know, rest in peace, um, Rico Suave of the BBN theme. It's, um, what can we do? What can we do? It's the Nigerian factor. I mean, Nigeria not happened to us in a bad way. I keep telling people, it's a, one, that's one of the biggest prayer points for anyone domiciled in Nigeria at the moment, right? So we're going to go live in a bit with Kafi. I sent her an invitation. Kafi, please, I sent her an invitation to join me live on the show today. Waiting for you to join in. Thank you, sis Fumiko. Thank you for joining. Yes, yes, sis, my sis. It's, it's, it's so tough, so hard. And, you know, for me, being the person who celebrates, you know, women, I've celebrated these women before. And to hear of their passing, one dying, you know, from domestic violence. The other person, she was sick for one year. One whole year, she was sick. And she didn't tell anybody. And this woman would always come on my page on Facebook and drop me love emojis, angel emojis. I didn't know she was telling me 
or passing a message to me. So please, while you're here, I'm encouraging you, check up on your strong friends. Check up on those of us who are like me, we are active. Check in, check in. Don't just ask, how are you? Ask, how are you really doing? Because people hide a lot. Believe me. Believe me, somebody was sick for one year and she was on Facebook. I didn't know, right? She, she disappeared for a while. I didn't know she was sick. I had no idea. Only for me to just see a picture, I'm like, what? Obi, what? You know, but the good thing for me is that I celebrated her in her lifetime. When people say, I start calling you know, all these people. I say this is because my platform is for everybody. I don't do click thing. Everyone who is adding value is my friend. So let us get right into the show for today. Kathy, waiting for you to join in. Um, thank you for those who joined early. Wale, everybody. Uh, sending you an invitation again, Kathy. Hi, thank you for joining. Uh, Yes, Oli, they're supposed to have flown him, you know, to, to the U.S., Ricky. But you know how the system is, huh? Still the hospital, like, before they even process the whole ticket thing to get him to the U.S. for medication. You know how Nigeria is now, bro, right? See, they all see the negligence of the, the, the nurses. They were proud, they were more interested in snapping photos. Hi, Kafi. I sent you, please, you can request to join. I sent you an invitation. If you can accept it, it's going to bring you. Okay, sis, I'll give you 10 minutes. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much. So, guys, um, as I was saying, may Nigeria not happen to us, Wally. There is no way they would have taken or flown Ricky out of the country. He, he, the, I mean, the timing. He, he needed urgent medical care first. Yeah, so, Kafi is unable to join. Okay. Sis, I'll give you 10 minutes. We're here waiting for you whenever you're ready. Yes, Ayo, the video was very annoying. I couldn't even watch the hang. And I hear it's not, the, it's not the first time, right? My problem is this. Do we have to wait till something happens to somebody that is known for us to talk? Because if someone else had come up to report this hospital, folks would have probably looked you know, looked at it like, oh, I beg, this one's just, they make noise. But now it happened to one of us, a popular figure, and everybody is saying justice for him. Justice, well, I mean, those, I'm not disrespect to the dead, but I'm just saying, let us treat everyone equally when they come out to share their pain, right? And I hope that that hospital and the management, they pay for this. I truly hope so. Though Ricky, um, Rico's family said they're not taking it up, they said they wanted to go. They want to sweep it under the carpet because their grandma who, you know, was very close to Rico in his lifetime. Um, he's having an emotional breakdown. Well, we respect that. Let them leave that to, 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 you know, to the state to decide. If there is negligence um, within the staff in that hospital, something has to be done. We can't let another person die. They were recording a man who was in pain. That young man needed urgent medical care. You know, you would see it from, he was fighting so hard to just breathe, to live. When Nigeria not happened to us, it is well. Oh, really? A couple cried out four weeks ago about their four-year-old girl in that same hospital. Well, if people have cases against them, let them, you know, compile the list, you know, pull the list together. And, you know, of course, I want to touch quickly on um, Bimbo Ogbona, Ike Ogbona, Ivy's wife, who also passed this week, unfortunately, um, leaving behind five children. I have cried. It, I almost broke down, but I, you know, also told myself, like, we've got to be strong for her. You know, we've got to be strong for her. It's a sensitive issue. I don't have all the details. I cannot speak to what I do not know. But from what we know, and what we've heard online, I just want to encourage anyone, because this video is going to be on YouTube, please, in Jesus' name, don't manage abusive partners. Don't manage abusive men or abusive women, because it's, don't do it, please. 
I am begging you, protect yourself. That woman is gone. Five children, who is going to take care of those children? Tayo, I see you. Thank you for joining. Who is going to take care of those children? And I think that's where I am now. I've moved from the face of being bitter about what happened that day to thinking about the five children, the things they would read online. And that's why I've been very careful with what I, I post about the situation online. Extremely careful with my words, right? I don't want to post something and my children will not be able to defend me in 10 years when they meet those kids, possibly, right? You know, I don't want to throw their mother under the bus because she's gone. What is the point in the blame game anymore? The, why she, didn't she leave? The, she's gone. Let's turn into a teachable moment. Let's turn into a teachable moment for other women. There are still women like Bimbo that within our communities, oh, they are there. Within our communities, as the society on our street, who are covering up that same violence. But because they are not known, these women, you see them, all those women that sell full stuff. She's the one family for the family. They also are bitter every day. So those kind of women, let's reach out to them. Please. Don't see. A man slaps you want a woman in marriage. My dear, Jack Bao. Hmm. This violence thing, it builds. If you take one slap today, tomorrow you go slap another one. Take it from me. <laughs> if we kick you today, tomorrow we go kick again. The abusers don't know when to stop. They are controllers. They are manipulators. And like I said, there are sensitive things about being boss case because I know that I have a public persona and I do not want to be quoted out of context, but I can speak to domestic violence because it's a topic and issue that I'm very passionate about. So I am asking us to please Encourage people to live to live. And another thing that bothers me is people that judge single mother like me. When we live, you judge us. Everybody is online now, live to live. So when those people now live like me, why do you judge us? Why don't you support us? Why do you ask us irrelevant questions? Sometimes people don't want to discuss the details of why they left a marriage. Let it be. Nobody walks into a marriage. I am telling you this, oh, except that person is not okay without wanting it to work. So if you see a woman, a career woman, a power woman, an ambitious woman who decides to walk out of a marriage and you know this person, you know, gave a heart to that marriage, you should know there is something. Th there is something. You, nobody will just wake up and say, you won't come up for marriage. Abba, please, empathy. Empathy, this fakeness, this double standard. I don't tire. Everybody live to live, live to live. We're all shouting now. Abby, we are shouting. The next one will happen now. Live to live. She will live. You will still come online, judge. If it's a celebrity that walked out of the marriage, you are judging her. Why? Why? Let people live their lives the way they want. Yes, hi, yo. It takes two to tango. If somebody does, if someone is not comfortable with the marriage anymore, let them leave. Let them leave. Being bored, it's, it's, it's sad. Look at being bored situation. Before you judge that woman, and I don't want to cry, remember those children. She has a boobay, old enough to read things on the internet. Please, in our submission with this issue, let us remember that that girl, 10 years from now, she's going to read everything online about her mother. And our names are going to pop up. We might not be there. Our children might have to start defending us. Ah, sorry, my mother said that, my daddy said that about your mother. So whatever the context of the situation, like I said, I cannot speak to it. It's an ongoing and, you know, unraveling. It's still unraveling. Please live to live. The moment your mental health is challenged in a marriage, my dear, and you cannot sleep, run. <laughs> Don't let them turn you to a shadow of yourself. Run, please. Nothing in this, don't die for anybody. Don't. When I left, people judge me. Seven years, they are still judging. But is judgment, judgment, does it pay my bills? Judgment is not paying my children's school fees. So sometimes when you have to leave, you have to be color. <laughs> You've got to be strong because the society is ready to dig into you. They are ready to judge you. They are ready to put you, throw you under the bus, nail you, to, you know, nail you to the cross. 
they don't know the context of why you left. But because there's a general perception that, ah, anybody that is popular, once they walk out of their marriage, it's because they, they, they don't want you to walk. Oh, Kafi is here. Yes, so we're going to live into the show. The queen is here. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi, sis. How are you doing, sis? Sorry. Um, it's a busy um, Sunday for me. I, I practically lost track of time. I am so, so sorry. I'm I so totally concerned. understand. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was going to ask you, you know, when I saw your yeah, booster story, I, in my head, I said, I wish you going to make it today. Because all that dancing, the, the fitness thing, I said, I said, well, you are, you are, you are the queen. <laughs> It's a lot. So it's thank a lot. you. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm just surrounded by a lot of, uh, I have a lot of paperwork to do. Uh, so, mm -hmm. like, it, in fact, in front of me here is like, <laughs> if in order for my Monday to, to, to start calmly, I need to finish all, tonight. like, I have a sleepless night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go to. But I, I was listening to what you're talking about, and it's really painful. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I know. We have a direction okay. of topics to speak. I don't think we plan that um, uh, mm -hmm. people will die, will die before this our mm -hmm. our conversation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I really want to say first of all that um, God uh, help our rest in peace. You know mm -hmm. this uh, this is a situation that I'm also a victim of um, being out of a marriage. Not I didn't have a physical abuse, but more or less like a mental and emotional instability which some which is the hardest one to defend is the hardest one to defend because every time okay. you report a situation people are going to go like but it never beat you now you understand and they'll be like ah, but in the comeback out but in the so our society is rigged against human mental uh, awareness or wellness whether for men or for women even some men even suffer it too like there are some men that are going through that that, that the only thing they know some of them have to commit suicide because the environment has made it look like they are weaklings for trying to even voice out as men that there's a vulnerability and sensitivity mm. to their own wellness too so how, as much as uh, Madame Bimboy was the one who lost her life in this situation, I'm sure both of them suffered some equal amount of abuse in, in toxicity for one another. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so um, at the end of the day, as much as we're looking at the women as, you know, the, the one that at the higher receiving end of abuse in homes, let's not forget that most abusers are abused people as well. They are broken people as well. So... They themselves have triggers that the other party is not even willing to understand. And if by when trigger and trigger and meet each other, it's a firing squad. Both sides will be firing at each other, you know. So at the end of the day, mental education or mental awareness education is a two sided thing. It's not we women should be more mentally, emotionally intelligent more than the men. No, 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 no. It's it has become a pandemic. And it's just because we are seeing a few deaths. There are many people that have died right now in their homes. They are dead already. They are dead. They are just walking. They are walking dead. Both men and women. And guess what? Because we have violated a lot of the foundational, foundational elements of family, we've all, we've all, we're all guilty of it, especially when we use mostly our emotions and love to join ourselves in holy matrimony, in building life together. We will end up creating a generation that will repeat the cycle until we break the pattern. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. We will continue to repeat mm. We're not killing ourselves here. Our, our parents are mm. a result of such cycle. And we are now in a, that result of that. And they were also result. So we have to break the cycle. How do we break the cycle? We need to educate ourselves. We need to accept that there is a broken mm. system here. And we need to all stop that judgment. Maybe not everybody, but there needs to be a level of high level of uh, education that needs to go. That look, men your validation of masculinity is not by how many women you're able to sleep with because our boys don't even have good mentors an average mm. adult male that sits down in the gathering of young men has a side chick how is he going to tell that guy that monogamous marriage is good for him when he doesn't even know what that looks like do you understand what i'm saying so our boys are being mentored to be like the men that averagely gets away with polygamous lifestyle 
and not anything mm -hmm. against polygamous lifestyle if it is an agreement with the parties you understand but it's enforced yeah you come in and you just meet it you understand then you not talk about philandering lifestyle where even the family structure protects a philandering man by telling you the woman that at least he come back home to you so it is a price for your man to come back home to you after he's cheated because him going away is like so you have not made marriage might be married to a man as an epitome of value a woman's life is placed on not by what she becomes or, 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 or the human she becomes which is totally against the structure of why god created us in the first place god looked at adam he was by himself turning turning mm -hmm. to the garden and working in the field but god said this is not good meaning you can be all successful high and mighty masculine male and have everything going on for you god said there's something still wrong with that i need to bring good to you and a woman is the price the man is not the price a woman is the price a well-groomed god-fearing kingdom woman with purpose and direction is supposed to be what they complement remaining piece of the puzzle yeah. to any man to any man yeah. but the dynamics has been changed by society it's been changed by society society has said you women you know, sir, you women go and the only time you consider you a, a, a well, a valuable woman is by the man you marry. Guys are not groomed to understand that they are not. They are, you, I, I, I don't want to say it. You call a man a caregiver, a captain of the ship, the one that nurtures, protects, secures, cares. But you don't teach him any of that when growing up. When he's supposed to be understanding how to tender, you tell him to go and play football. When you're supposed to be understanding mm. emotional intelligence, you tell him to shut up and you should stop crying. When you're supposed to be understanding how to cater to the home, you tell him, no, your sister will do your lay your bed for you. The house will lay your bed for you. What are you doing in the kitchen? I watched my father be a complete man. Like my dad was basically at one year or two year old. I remember vividly my dad was one that baited us, took care of us, groomed us, even though our mom still was there, but because she was such a workaholic, they kind of like, change it i've never seen it in my own family your men do go to kitchen my father knows how to cook more soup in the food than we women self do you understand i learned most of it from my dad do you understand i'm saying it was a hot all-rounded family man well-rounded family man i learned as much as i learned how to cook in the kitchen with him i also learned how to change tires so in our home we don't treat a child like this is the boy this is the girl we're talking about this is life and this is how you live through life are we teaching kids like that so why are we expecting perfect marriages? They aren't going to be perfect marriages because even the grooming of children is not in a perfect state. So we are just asking for what we did not, uh, what we did not plant. We didn't sow the seed, but we are expecting it. There's a lot of broken men out there. A lot of broken men out there. So an average woman should be prepared that an average man is a project. You understand? <laughs> because an average man is a project. I, 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 I always see all those quotes. I say, don't, you're not his fixer. You're not his project. Don't go and become the mechanic of another workshop. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the only prayer you can pray is God not allow you to fix a jerk or a prick. But an average man, even a good man, still needs help. Because there are some things that is born out of ignorance, not out of wickedness. Because they're not groomed to be so. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm speaking from a place yes, of where... Yes. I'm speaking from a place of where people are even genuinely wanting to do right. You understand what I'm saying? Because some people mm -hmm. don't understand mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, they, don't, they don't understand why. Because we're not groomed, in, in, especially in this part of our society, to seek for doing right. We are groomed to just obey. So if the wrong person mm -hmm. teaches you with the dictatorship mm -hmm. style of, of grooming we have mm -hmm. in, our, in our African system, it's very dictatorial. It's not by, we don't, we, don't, we don't groom people by watching. Like right now, I groom my kids by watching them. What, what, is, what is my son's flair going into? Where is his mind dynamics going to? Okay, I'm, I, want to, I want to do what? Elevate that area because I see that he's, he's yearning towards this area. We are watching them. We are supposed to tender the garden. You can't tender the garden against the seed of the fruit the garden is made to yield. You understand? It's like God gave you a child that is purposive, or you want him to yield the fruit of plantain. You can't even study that child to know that it's purposive. That is the you can't even study the seed that the child is carrying. Mm -hmm. I said, no. My own father carried me to the pond, and that's how I grew. Let me carry my son and throw him into the pond too. You don't do that. You don't even know the, your, you don't even know your child. We are custodians. We don't own them. We don't own children. We don't own any human being. 
we can only be in the light mm -hmm. of by alignment and by assignment by alignment mm -hmm. and assignment mm -hmm. we don't think about mm -hmm. that okay, we are both single mothers i am very sure there are a lot of things that you know now that you wish you knew before you enter the first marriage yes yes, yes. there are a lot of things yes. i know now that i wish i knew so as much as I, yes. I can say i want to blame one party for one thing i blame myself because if i knew what i knew now i would have taken proper steps and not be put in this scenario so that those things will be checked before final uh final agreement but we we are we were raised to think that romance yes. is like the chemical reaction of chemistry and emotional alignment and once he loves me mm. and i love you and i feel butterfly in my stomach when i see him that means he's the good one we don't check we don't do background checks we don't do family background check we don't do family mental health background check do these people have a history of mental health breakdown in their family we don't do those kind of checks even the spiritual background check we don't do spiritual background check are you guys aligning spiritually we don't do those background checks we don't know where they are coming from. It's why you're not married now. You're not be carrying the ancestral generational problem of that man and your own joined together. You're not start fighting battles that you don't yeah. have. So all but of these things, have no business fighting. Yeah, we're looking at all of these things from a very, very peripheral surface area. They are they, they, see, kingdom it's agenda. Big. Kingdom agenda is lost in the world. Kingdom agenda. Yes. Why well, we've forgotten that we have forgotten why we are here. We have forgotten why yes. we are here. We are here so yes. selfishly selfishly pursuing validation of the reason to be mm. valued as a human being mm. rather than understanding mm. the purpose of why we are here and pursuing mm -hmm. towards that purpose which is what makes way for us mm. but we all like to look a certain way because society has told you mm. that there's no dignity in your labor except certain kind of labor is what is called dignity that is the reason why anybody that has money is respected they don't even care where the money is coming from you don't care where the money is coming from because a man that does works hard and is a bricklayer, if you a woman carries him to his father's house, they say, "So now bricklayer, you won't marry." Now, wow, whether he's a honest bricklayer or not, they don't want to know. But if he carries you wagon, they are not even going to ask whether you don't come up as a head to to, to get that you wagon. They automatically respect you. So what have you done to the men? You told them you don't need that. We told the women. You told them there is no need for you to be good to a guy that is good. The good guys will tell you they are frustrated because all the all the girls have have don't turn, turn, turn them bad, or girls are telling them that if you can't go and make money, you can't marry me. Is that is that what is that what they say you look for? So we are messed up, we are broken, mm. broken mm. system, broken everything. But where there is a will, there is a way. One family at yes. a time, one mistake yes. change at a time. Every mistake yes. I make, I I I am not con I'm not condemned by my mistake. I would only yes. be stupid if I didn't learn from them. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. I would only be stupid. So yes. right now, Bimbozon has come to the limelight. It is another trigger for learning. It's another trigger yes. to realize that these things are happening. You understand? Yes. And we need yes. to we need to we need to be aware. Because if we want it to get better, we mothers mm. raising boys need to do better. Mm. Raising yes. girls Thank you. need to do better. Thank you. We need to start Thank you. teaching the right morals. Not the one that was passed down. A lot of what was passed down to us, we need to eradicate, unlearn, and relearn. Even if we have to go mm. back to the foundational scriptures of why. Why man, yes. why woman. You understand? Yes. Because you can't give what you yes. don't have. You can't teach your daughter. At all. You can't teach your daughter the values and standards mm -hmm. of what she should search for in a man when you don't even know that. When your, your own mental health made you choose the wrong guys so you need to be healed you need to heal you need to be in the right frame of mind you need to be listening to the right doctrines and change your perce perception of what is that is important so that you can transfer it to your daughter and to your son and sometimes they might not have the perfect family template to see but they, can, they shall understand what a perfect family template should look like you understand they need yes. to understand what it look like. You understand what I'm saying? So just mm -hmm. because your dynamics has changed and you're a single mom, you can't tell the child mm -hmm. that that is, I, I don't worry, even if you're a single mom, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Yours is to try and make sure she doesn't fall into that mm -hmm. scenario. But let her know that mm -hmm. this is an option if it gets bad. However, that is mm -hmm. not where we are praying for it to to go to. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted yeah. to just uh, speak on the, on, the, on, the, on the matter. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. You dropped the master class inside the master class. <laughs> you can be listening. And I just want to say thank you so much for that. I didn't even expect you to, you know, say that much. But yeah. I want to believe that you've encouraged somebody on this live video today to do one thing, and that is to look in work. Like yeah. you said, it's always easy for us to point finger. Sometimes you got to check the role you play in that situation. Because most of us don't have to ask ourselves those questions. What role did I play? So thank you very much. Everyone, thank you for joining. I'm sure Kathy already gave us the preamble of what the show is going to look like. <laughs> for those who don't know her, this is a power woman. Um, when I was young, I mean, a few years ago, I remember that I sat at home glued to the TV, silver bed television, to watch tapping and a dance group. Dance it out for 55 hours, if I'm right. To beat and to make the Guinness World Record. I would never forget my excitement when they said, yes, you guys crossed that record. I, <laughs> so it is an honor to have you on my show today. And I want you to know that beyond the, the dance business, you are an inspiration to a lot of us. Thank you. Because at that time, dance was seen as something negative. You know, the Yoruba people will call this Allah Jota. But you refined dance. You brought in a different dynamics of dance. And, you know, I just want to thank you for that. And I want you to know that so many of us are rooting for you. <laughs> Thank you. And that, you know, the, the, the image you've been able to, I, I, was, I said I'm going to ask you, yeah. how, before we go into the session, how have you been able to maintain relevance over oh. the years? Okay, okay, I get asked this question a lot, you know, I get mm -hmm. asked these um, questions a lot, and I, I try to let people understand that it's not by trying to maintain relevance. It's about pursuing the vision and the, mm -hmm. the journey itself. It's like a moving train. So when I set myself upon this mission, dance was just a tool that is helping me to the mission. And what is the mission? The mission is this. Human life matters beyond what it is that it is defined by the work they do. I don't believe that anybody was created useless. It's not possible. So why would I be in the world and my parents are already telling me that the only way I will be valued by the world I have been born into is if I'm a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. And if I'm not in any of those status, societally graded status, then I'm nobody. I'm like, that's not true. I'm already somebody just being me. Like... I'm in my school, and the little I do, I'm, I'm recognized. I'm in my school, I'm ordinary match pass. They'll say, that girl, the way she did match, let her be the one in front. If I'm speaking, they'll be like, that girl, the way she speaks, let her represent the school. So I'm already, it's like conflicting in my head. When I go home and they tell me, you got to be this to be somebody. You got to be this to make us proud. I'm like, but I'm who I am right now, and I'm coming home with all these accolades from school. That is not making you proud? So I got to fit into this box? No. So as I was growing up, I, I, I followed the rules of educating myself. I followed the rules of going to school and everything like that before Jam started jamming us and started distorting the, the uh, tide and the waves of, you know, where you want to go. And I decided that, look, I am not <clears throat> going to sit in that classroom that says this list of profession is what grades my value as a human being. I'm not going to sit in that classroom. I'm going to sit in a classroom that says life is going to do you and you're going to do life. However, you'll be somebody as long as you hold on to the life that God has prepared for you. And whatever tool he wants to use at that moment, I will grab that tool and keep moving forward. And that tool is enough for me. So at some point in my life, I pursued university. That journey created paths that I couldn't control. And when I had to drop out of the university, I dropped out knowing that I couldn't control the outcome as well. Because certain things I couldn't control. I would try my best and I couldn't control. And I continued to move, to move on. And when that thing I got to the place where dance was required, I used dance in the spot that was needed at that time. And that elevated me to another spot and elevated me to another spot until the point whereby we're all here speaking about my journey. So I am the testimony 
that God is in us and is in us expressing himself in different ways, manners, and style. The same way a, president, a child is born and he has been already named the president of the country in his future. It's the same way a child is born and is the organizer to the president. Who will be the one to fix that flat tire that could have killed the president if he wasn't there? But he was appointed from mm -hmm. birth to be that organizer. And that organizer will be the one that is dedicated enough to make sure that he checks off four tires so that the what? The fate of that boy that's supposed to be the president who entered that car that day is fulfilled. So all of us an instrument to the existence of this world. And if you can just understand that fact, that whether you are graded celebrity status or you are graded just somebody in somebody's life, can that be enough for us? Because even that celebrity life that you are, you are looking forward to, it's another headache on its own. And some of us are not even built for that capacity. I did not seek fame. Fame found me. I didn't seek it. I can't hide from being famous. I stand out. I'm a bright light in the room. And I'm meant to shine in through hearts that feel that they are dark. It is my call. I cannot do it. If, if I let me move from Nigeria now and go and live in a village in Rwanda, give me a couple of months, you will still hear news that there was one Nigerian girl that moved there. And something, 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 something she has become. That is, that is just my path. But in it comes his own wars that God has created my capacity for. Which is why you are seeing me here 20 something years after I am still here. It's not by my doing. It's not by my doing, sis. It's not. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And I love the fact that, you know, I've been listening to you in the past couple of minutes. It's a good factor. We keep bringing it to every conversation. And I'm always mindful of that when I have guests, just to see who they keep going to for where they are. And it seems, you know, that's something you carry along with you. So thank you so much for that. So once again, guys, I'm happy. Dr. Kathy Shafal. Yes, she is a doctor. She is a choreographer, a fitness coach. Like I said, a world record holder. Kathy has evolved from just being, you know, the image of what children should be when it comes to dancing. Now she's an enigma. She's a legend. In her own right. And once again, I'm honored to have you here, Kathy. So let me dive in into the first question. And that is the Guinness World Record title. How did it feel in that moment? When you broke that record, how did you feel? Um, first of all, I knew I knew I was gonna break it. I just didn't know how. <laughs> you I like that. <laughs> I just didn't know how, and that that is how I that is how I practically face everything in life. Like I just told myself, I'm going to build the biggest dance creative company in the world. That my company will be one that dancers will be able to drive out of the parking lot in a Maserati. How that is going to happen yeah. is not of my business. I just said my father, it will happen. Why? Because I know it's going to make life better. Finish. So I just went in with the mindset of it's going to be done. How? I don't know. Did I feel like dying at some point? Yes. But I had to put my eyes on the goal. Did I face a lot of uh, obstruction? Yes. When you read my book, you see, those of you that want to get the book, you see, I, felt, I even got antagonism within my own camp as well. Against something that was supposed to benefit everybody. So that's why many are called, few are chosen. Sometimes you want to go somewhere with a lot of people. You just end up finding out, finding out that you're going to end up by yourself. You need to learn to let people go when they want to go. So just, yes. in, that, just in that moment, I learned life. And I learned that I learned the power God wielded into me in order to penetrate the minds of people because the people that i broke the record with i don't know them i don't know their mental capacity i don't know whether they have the physical capacity i met them that day you understand i had only like six or eight people that were from my school every other one was scattered in other groups so i am going in blind with people that i don't know and i have to convince them i have to enter their mental core to say we're gonna do it and they have to believe me and I, that I'm leading them, cannot look weak because they are, they are drawing strength from me. That is why when we keep looking 
when we keep looking for so many people to get it right there's no need no one person gets it right see the whole of nigeria can be fantastic with less than 20 people they're doing it right you understand mm -hmm. they said the power in numbers mm -hmm. less but two mm -hmm. agree and the bible say the power the tower of babel was 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 going up to meet god because of agreement mm -hmm. because of agreement so if you and mm -hmm. i agree Anna, they say one takes one thousand two takes twenty thousand ten thousand see the see the see the math the math doesn't even make sense one takes ten thousand two takes <laughs> you understand one takes one thousand two takes ten thousand can you see in tens of thousands mm -hmm. so if i'm already chasing 10 million imagine another another mm -hmm. life joining me imagine having over uh over two, 200 let me just say over 50 million nigerians acting right that is enough to create a change do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so what i felt I that day was just someone on a mission and i had an opportunity to prove the path that i wished for Mm. And let me, let me break it to you. I saw the Guinness Book of Record the first time in my life in 1989. I saw that book in 1989. I looked at the book, opened it, and I said, Wow, I'd like to be in this book. I'm going to be in this book one day. God, I don't know what it is you're going to use me to do or to be in this book. I'm just going to be in this body. And that was it. I didn't think about it again. And that was it. And less than 20 years from then, I'm, I'm like, I'm in a book of record. So sometimes when you proclaim something, just believe in, believe in God. Sometimes one of the problems we have is when we desire something and we are now trying to control how it will come about. That is another problem. We now want to play God on the matter. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, uh, over mm -hmm. time, we are always all guilty of this. Even in little things, especially the things that we think we can control. You understand what I'm yes. saying? We try to go too detailed in wanting to see the outcome that we are looking for. Guess what? But God has the outcome waiting for you. However, the process to that outcome, leave it to him. Because his own direction comes with a lot of goodies. There's a lot of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of growing. There's a lot of being that your own mm -hmm. can never understand. Mm. can never understand your mm. own can never understand mm. so at some point when i try mm. so much of my own i use my intelligence to a point i use my strength to a point i just say baba i don't may, may it just happen i ever happen i just happen I, i'm here you understand what i'm saying and that's it yeah yeah thank you so much that, that's very powerful and i love the way that you you broke it down um that takes me to the next question which is of course being africa's you know, dance queen, uh, yeah. female dance queen, I must say, you must have encountered some challenges. Right? No, I assume there are a couple of dancers on the show today. You know, I want you to just quickly talk on those challenges you have to overcome. How did you tackle those challenges when they came to you? Okay. Um, when you say challenges, there are uh, different types because my challenge, first of all, majorly was to even sell the unsellable. How do I sell something that nobody even values or tries to, nobody's going to pay for it? Being an entertainer in, a, entertainer in an African environment looks like you are a server in the party. You are not, mm. you, are, you are like a server. You are, you are as important as, ah, ah, pass me the rice. That's how important you are. And once the party is over, nobody, you are not relevant. You are not relevant to a home. You are not relevant to, to life. You are just, you are just a source of entertainment. You are a jester. Mm. So mm. as people like to hire jesters in their party, nobody wants their family to be the jester creating family. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so my first challenge was how do I sell the unsellable? And uh, note to any dancer or anybody here that wants to venture into something that looks like the world is not ready for, there is always going to be something that thing is solving. Find that thing. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. thing. So what? I found was that number one, from the health department, which is why the stadium was the first place of contact for me, people were bored with normal exercise and they wanted something more fun and more, and dance gave them that. And dance is like a triple dose giver. There is no way you dance, come stressed, and you leave stressed. It's not possible. It's a mental health stress elevator. You understand? Then you now talk about. The fact that you're even enjoying your body the way it is. Because sometimes you can be walking out in the gym and see, see, this, see my stomach, see my stomach. When you're dancing, you're not going to be thinking about all of that. So self-esteem, it rises it up. 
then you are not able to even achieve the goal of weight loss or whatever it is that you want to do. Then it boosts confidence. So when you look at all those ingredients, and people know that they can pay anything for that thing, you have created demand and a supply. That is business. Then the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. the reason why I was able to crack into that also is because when I started dancing at that time, the value of me being in your music video increased the, um, the rotation of increase their rotation on TV. So that girl dancing in your music video made the station play 10 times more than they'll play a regular video. So when you look at it in the, mm -hmm. in the, the, in the business plan chain of an entertainment outfit, it is valuable to have her on your, on your set. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because she's affecting our numbers. And the moment I started affecting our, their numbers, then my value started increasing. And not just that, because I also apply myself to my work and I put excellence and diligence into whatever I do. They were so surprised that a dancer, first of all, could be disarticulate because people have subjected the idea of dancing to immoral, get out, unintelligent people. So they hear somebody like me defending dance the way a doctor would defend medicine. And they're like, so those attitudes towards who I, I am and what I was doing had a more, uh, had a bigger effect over even the act of dancing itself. The person behind the dance had more effect over the act of dancing itself. And the fact that I was selling something, it's almost like when you see maybe, let me just give an example. A woman selling Guguru and Epa, and she dresses well, and she dresses up. <laughs> I understand, and she puts a good one in the search. Go, 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 she now has a um, record. You'll be like, ah, this woman, see when she packages this girl and I put like this one. What would you do? You want to buy from her now? Like, this is my, I don't know. I don't know. So it started like that. It's that ownership that I'm talking about dance. So I will go to some companies and they'll say, I need you to do a presentation based on what we're trying to do for the promotion of our, our product. I have already studied the, the company's product line. I've studied you know, the consumer um, um, rate and how the, uh, how consumers react to them. I've studied, I've done a little bit of SWOT analysis with the company, so I already know what it is they're looking for, and I ask certain questions that they're looking like, uh, are you the dancer, or you're the manager of the dancer? You understand? It's wanted to dance, huh? Mm -hmm. brain. Mm -hmm. yeah, our brain, the dance. Yeah, me, I'm brainy, I'm, I'm brain. So by the time I joined the brain and the dance together, there's no way I was, on I was on a supersonic level right from start. I was like way ahead of, of what I was doing. I was way ahead. People didn't even understand some of the things I was talking about at that time. Nobody understood okay. it. Even when I was uh, registering at CAC, they were like, dance company. I don't understand. They've never registered a dance company in CAC before. Like, I don't understand. Is it dance school? Is it a school? I say company. Service providing company. Uh-uh. Uh -huh. So... I now, I now had the challenges of explaining, it's like I have to develop the business module from scratch without having help from any structured business module because everybody that I was hiring has never heard of creating such modules for a dance company before. They, like, they don't understand. What, what are you guys doing? What, what, are, what are we saying? What are we doing? <laughs> My sister, mm. if you talk about challenges, it's a lot. So just from business structure, there were challenges. From uh, promotion and acceptance, there were challenges. From me being a woman, trying to uphold, mm. just, let me just face work, and the sexual harassment that comes with the sexualization of a female dancer, there's another challenge. Then there's a level of growth. I want to grow my company. I want to be able to get loans from a bank. Before I even get to that point, whereby I am even eligible for the loan, it's another challenge. So it's like, I think I need to write a book on challenges alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it seems, it seems, it seems uh, you know, you, you have to go through a, a lot of it. Yeah. And uh, one thing you just mentioned uh, is your gender. Yeah. Uh, which I know for a fact, you know, must have been one of the challenges and the hurdles you have to cross. Explain mm -hmm. yourself to mm -hmm. men in the room that yeah. you are capable. You know, so yes, thank you very much for, for sharing that. Now, you know, so a lot of parents, African parents, in quotes, yeah. yeah. who don't see dance as a profession. Yeah. You know, and I want to assume a lot of them, some of them might have come to your academy, your school, um, with their children. You know, how are you able to change their ideology, you know, with regards to the profession of dance? 
Uh, first of all, I think the ideology, first of all, or the perception is changed by the character of mm -hmm. who I am. I think uh, who I am and how I've held myself over the years gave a lot of okay. confidence. Then when they walk into my establishment and they see, uh-uh, they see how security is opening door for them. They enter, they see lobby, uh-uh, like say the day bank. There was a family that came and said, ah, this is a dance, <laughs> dance place. I said, that. Uh, I mean, a party will come. Like, uh, like company, a real company. I said it's a real company. That's why it's like a real company. <laughs> you know, they come into my office, you know, they sit down and I'm like, okay. And they're like, okay. So there are some that just walking into um, online classes. Okay. There are some that just walking into the environment. Mm -hmm. they're, done. they're like, ah, because they were expecting a place where they were spelling the book. <laughs> they're seeing people, guys, just lay, laying down on the floor chilling on the wall. I don't know. I don't encourage that because li listen, we already know that our industry is filled with that. Mm -hmm. This is what scares parents again. Why would I now want to sell it with a package of that lurking around? No, no, no. I have to stand out. Yeah, not like I don't see guys that do all of those things or there and that, you know, can't come and do it in my environment. That's a personal thing. Go and do it in your house. Don't do it within my vicinity. We have uh, CCTV everywhere. Even all those uh, Colombian, Colombian, that's most more children, boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, man, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it here. Yes. Oh. And your father, what you say is this food that you got pregnant. Please. <laughs> I can imagine. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. And I yeah. hear you. What I hear is you building the proper structure. Um, yes. You know, and the structure alone, can, you know, it's, it's a conviction for a lot of parents who walk into your, into your company. We don't need to say so much. Just them seeing that you're a properly structured organization and you know your onions, you know. And I, I believe beyond that, we all know that. Have the structure in place. Always have a structure, right? So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, is dance profitable? This is the question that I want to ask you. In today's world, is yeah. it a profitable profession? Dance is a multi billion dollar industry. Multi billion dollar industry. I repeat, multi billion dollar industry because it has an ecosystem it function in. At now, as average mm. dancer, people in Nigeria only limit you by the movement of your body. However, as a dancer, you can work across several sectors of the economy. A dancer can work in the health sector. You can work in, under the therapy, therapy se sector, that's if you're looking at healing. And um, okay. we are talking about healing, physiotherapy, and all of that. Dancers can work there. Dancers can work on the mental therapy sector of the health industry. And also in the fitness and wellness sector. Dancers can work there. Dancers can work in hospitality department, because why? They love entertainment as well in that area. Dancers can work in government, because what? They can help with the creation of uh, tourism and uh, youth development and all of that. Dancing is also for fantastic for educators. You can be an educator as a dancer because you can use dance techniques to actually help children with ADHD or attention or memory retention problems to help with their cognitive reasoning skills. So dance also used there. So the science of the body movement is the science of studying humanity, which a lot of people have relegated to just the fancy stage play that we see, which is beyond that. So for me, I am expanding the mindset of people to understand the ecosystem that dance works in, that a dancer can work in the fashion industry, a dancer can work, can work in a, you know, uh, can work in the production industry, can work in the film industry, those are the good that you see do choreograph fights, stuntmen, and all of that. Mm -hmm. a dancer can, mm -hmm. So if you are a dancer and you practice dance holistically, you actually have an opportunity of having jobs different sector. It's not like I don't have I don't have work. Then you have not studied dance properly. You only have to know how to move. And mm -hmm. that is not that's not the limitation of dance. A dancer is a scientist, a dancer is a mathematician, a dancer is a physicist, a dancer is a is a healer, a dancer is a teacher. You understand what I'm saying? It all depends on how fast you you want to be as a human being. And um Dance is uh, one of the, the movement. I'll say is one of the is the first language man knew before he could speak. Mm -hmm. Just gesticulating and putting sequence of gestures together communicates to you love, anger, mm -hmm. pain, happiness, joy. Instructions all can be communicated with the sequence of movement, and that is the power yes. that dance has. Amazing. Thank you yes. so much for for sharing that. And you know that takes me to the next question, which is.
your company what are the services you offer in your company that's one and then of course we'll now talk about your book you mentioned your book so we'll yeah. come back to your book but then i want to know if your company you know for somebody who's watching right now who wants to know what services do you offer in your company okay so now the company has grown you know so it started off as a magneto dance company and now a magneto dance company started as an integrated outfit where I gave, I delivered different services under one umbrella, under a Magneto dance company. Now, each of these services that I integrated have now become a company on their own. Mm -hmm. So right now, mm -hmm. because under dance, you know, as a dancer, you still need to sort out your costumes by yourself, which, which I had to do all in one packages when I started back then. So because of that, I started learning other areas that allows me to deliver my services properly. So. Fitness and wellness was under a magneto. Costuming was under a magneto. You understand? Um, uh, training was under a magneto. Uh, brand uh, um, agency and hiring of dancers. Was, but now, each of these things has grown into separate entities. So these separate entities are all under what we call Cafe Incorporated Holdings Limited. Cafe Inc. Mm -hmm. That's the big umbrella right now. So Cafe Inc. Now, because we always hire, train, teach, and we are going into the certification because we are now um, collaborating with different universities. By next year, we should have our first dance business course uh, in a university in, in uh, Cotonou and Ghana. And that's the certification happens. I'm launching my uh, um, training site uh, next year, by God's grace. So with that, Cafe Incorporated now gave birth to Cafe Creative Agency. Now, this is the agency that solves all creative solutions, training and certification. So if you're a company, you want to do creative campaigns, you're an artist, you want to train your artist how to be fantastic on stage, you're a dancer, you want to know how to do your dance business properly, if you understand, or you want to be trained or hired, the Cafe Creative Agency handles all that. Then we have the Joda Fitness and Wellness. That is where we deal with your wellness and fitness needs. That's under Ijoda. Then we have Yanga. Yanga is the one that makes all my outfits, costumes, you understand, and product lines for even our uh, existing clientele. So we have Yanga. Then we have the foundation, which is an avenue that I use to help other people. So in the, in the foundation, we focus on three major areas. We are focusing on the creative education from children, because we have children that we are training for free from very um, low-earning parents' homes. And we also... Uh, focus on training them creatively, then their education. So their creative education and their academic education goes hand in hand where we train mm -hmm. them. Then we have what they call community outreach for people that are, they are caregivers. Some of these kids have old parents or uncles and aunts that they are taking care of them. So they have medical needs. So we do mm -hmm. medical, medical outreach for their, you know, for their caregivers. And the third one is also to protect um, the, the wellness and the uh, uh, rights of of creative um, uh, practitioners. So how to teach dancers how to get insurance, health insurance, you understand, and all of that things that can protect them under that. So the foundation does, you know, <laughs> all of that work. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work, it's crazy. And I have the last one, the last one is Q Network Africa, which is new, which is now a TV station idea I have in my head where content concerning the creative industry, you get to understand the people behind the stars, how they do the work, uh, tell real African stories from the creative angle, and all that. It's a lot. So, huh, that's it. I mean, listening to you, I wouldn't have thought that you do all that. And that is the power of perception. Like you said, sometimes don't know people on the surface, know what they are made of. And if that's what you just done. Because a lot of people came here today to learn about Kathy the dance queen. But now you're showing us Kathy the business woman, which I love and I'm inspired by that and the way you just thought out the structure of what you do. So thank you so much for, for you know taking us through all of that. Now to your book. What is your book all about? Um, what inspired you to write the book? And who are the target audience for the book? I've always wanted to write a book since my journey started. Since I started, since I started feeling bad books in life. I started writing since I was 13. But I felt, I felt I, my story was not done yet for a first chapter. So I chilled. Mm -hmm. you understand? And during the pandemic, I had enough time to finish the book. Yeah, and that was the time when I was going through the rockiness of my marriage as well. 
and that's why when you read the book at the end of the chapter i was hoping that everything worked out you understand at the end of the day and if it doesn't life continues you understand so the target of the book is to target any human mind that has limiting beliefs <laughs> Any human mind limiting beliefs. It's not a book to teach you how to dance. It's a book to teach you that life can be made from who you are, where you are, and how you are. You understand? You don't need to be another person to become somebody, you know, or to become somebody. You understand what I'm saying? And you know that an average young person in Africa and in lots of places around the world have had to struggle with that identity of who they are versus who people want them to be. And some don't even know how to fight that already set structure. You understand? It's a principality and powers. So people think principality and powers are only enemies. Principality and powers you met in your home. Principality and powers that you met in your home. How do you fight familiar spirits? How do you fight familiar principalities and powers who are doing what they do because they love you, but it's against your calling? It's against your assignment mm. because they themselves have missed it at mm. some point. You understand? And you now have to mm. trust that voice, mm. that silent voice in your head that is God's voice. But it is mm. silent, but it's strong enough to move your spirit. <laughs> yes. It's strong enough to move yes. your spirit. And you are following that, yes. and you are seeing that the result of following that is coming with a lot of negative backlash, but there's a conviction mm -hmm. in the spirit that you are doing the right thing. And uh, yes. so the book is to help catalyze those that are in that in that place and want to understand how i did it how i got there you know and it's the beginning of a journey it's the beginning of a journey that you can change the narrative of, of your life and yeah. many more books many more books to come amazing and um, what is the name of the book ala jota ala jota and is it available now is it on amazon yeah, go, where can people get the book if you go to my book, uh, if you go into my um, Instagram link, you will see it in my link mm -hmm. tree. You will see the link right there. It takes you straight to um, my Amazon page where you can buy buy the book. You can buy the e-copy or you can also um, book the print. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And uh, I want to ask you one funny question. Should we expect a movie a documentary because you know when i was selling documentaries on netflix for example and when i you know when i was reading up about the online today again just to prep me for this session i said to myself wait a minute this human should have something on netflix yes okay so this human should have I've something on first, amazon time i've done the first <laughs> phase I've, I've done the first phase of the documentary right yes. yes i've not released it to the general public yet but i've released it for mm -hmm. private viewing and the second phase mm -hmm. is going to be shot. Uh, I'm starting shooting on the second phase by next uh, by yes. December. By December, and uh, the third phase mm -hmm. is going to be by God's grace is going to be a series on a dance series on any of these your top uh, distribution platforms, which is it could be anyone that mm -hmm. gets that takes it, Netflix or Amazon mm -hmm. Prime or whichever one God mm -hmm. God allocates, and also be expecting some action films too, because I want to go into. Mm -hmm. To action films i feel that african kids are looking for a superhero and we don't give them you yes. know you understand what i'm saying and yes. my kids I, my, yes. i'm inspired by my children my, my children see me as a super mom they see me as a superhero mm -hmm. they believe that the world needs heroes mm -hmm. they believe that they are also going to be superheroes mm -hmm. and uh yes. and i see that the one i dress in that superhero thing when i go out to events children are attracted to that so, okay why don't i create a character called the phoenix and she's this mm -hmm. person that fights against all norms. Like, nothing holds her back. Mm -hmm. And kids can mm -hmm. see how she fights for justice, um, social justice, and all of that through being who she is. You know, we just need to use different avenues to entertain and educate young, the young minds. Mm -hmm. yes. Amazing. And speaking of children, do you have anything in your um, company for children, in your dance company? Do you have like a section for of children? Course, for of children course, of course, of course. Uh, so because of the, the effect of COVID, I have had to restructure my business model to become more of an online thing because I'm about to um, launch my app. It's, it's, it's been taking a lot of work. I'm still on it. And um, because of that, we'll be able to distribute, want to be more content based because there we can be in people's homes even if they're not with us. So I'm focusing on mm -hmm. virtual content production more because I can reach more people that way. Mm -hmm. Then once that is established, mm -hmm. we can now dwell on conventions, conferences, and workshops to do in-person programs. 
that is the that is the idea. Yeah. Oh, that's that sounds that sounds good. And you know, just before we go, um, I want to ask you because I know you are very busy. It's been a busy day for you. Yeah. Being a single mother, um, how are you able to juggle all of this together and still maintain mental wellness and emotional wellness? You know, what support system do you have in place to help you yourself as Kathy and as a mother? <sighs> There is no blueprint. Mm. It's, uh, you just have to have an intentional, intentional life. You have to be intentional. Mm. Intentionality mm. is the game. Intentional about what mm. you consume. Intentional about what you put around you. There are days that you are going mm. to be in that storm. There are days when I'm so mentally drained and depressed. But I got what it takes to come out. And I wait and I come out. And I, and I grow out of it again, and I come out, another layer has been stripped off, another layer has been worn, and I strive through that layer mm -hmm. again. And if another storm comes, I go through that storm again, and I get another layer, another coat is added onto my skin, thickens me, and I go again. So if you're out there thinking that somebody has one perfect blueprint, there isn't. God is the only blueprint. God is the only blueprint. The only thing that I run back to that gave me, got me back is God. It's God, because mm. the moment you're lonely, mm. you want companionship. But God is saying, uh, yeah. well, this is of your life. You are enough right now. And when it's time, mm -hmm. I'll send you. So I believe I'm going to find love again. And this time around, I'm not going to make a mistake. I believe I'm going to get it right. I believe in love. You know what I'm saying? I believe that there's a, there, there's a dragon for the phoenix. <laughs> you understand? I believe that. Yeah. I, I believe that when I go this time around, it should be a mm. man that values the amount of work God has put in me for him. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. I'm a favorite mm. man. So I'm not going to be with a mm. man that sees me as competition or it doesn't have the emotional intelligence or capacity to understand capacity. That, that what I carry is actually for him and not against him. You understand what I'm saying? So, mm. yeah. What carry is for him, not against him. No. Which I think is a problem, actually. Like it's a lot of power we men and ambitious women face the level of grace you know some carry yeah. if you meet somebody who's, who's not emotionally prepared yeah. at that frequency yeah you might find yourself trying to do your life to fit the picture you want who to they want the, to see yes 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 yeah. own picture and that's I where the problem comes i don't use in. cash app but i use zell for the person asking what's my cash app i use zell so, okay, please maybe mention mention it to them. <laughs> so I don't use Cash App, but I use Zelle, and you can okay. send what you want. I don't know what you want to send for, but you need to let me know in the Zelle if it's for the book or it's a donation okay. to the foundation. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. So if you're in America or you have an American account, you can use my Zelle and okay. Chapter 2001. This is my Zelle info. You can please pin it. Okay. Okay. Dot com. Yeah. So this okay. is my information. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, yeah. for those who ask, okay, this spinning thing is more, more my own my own challenge on Instagram. <laughs> so you click on it and you click on it and you can pin. Once you click on the stuff, just click on okay. my on what I wrote. Then you just you see options. You tell you pin comment. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, the, oh, the lady said, um, you are speaking to me and I want to sow a seed in your business. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Thank wow. you so much. God, God bless God. you. That is the power of conversations like this, to inspire. Oh. To inspire. Oh. So that, that's amazing. And you can also connect with Kathy, of course, yes. you know, privately. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to follow her. I'm going to follow her. Uh -huh. I'll reply to her that's in good. our DM. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. So, Kathy, um, for anyone who is out there right now, yeah, a young person who is watching, because I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel as well. Okay. Who needs inspiration? We know the situation of the country. Please just drop some nuggets for them to inspire them okay. right now. So it's just like this is this is coming as like almost like coincidental because I had this conversation with a young man that was talking to me today about Jackpa. Ah, I mean I don't they enter the Jackpa train. No. I say, hey, what are you Jackpa? What, what's your what's your Jackpa mission? What are you going for? 
have you even thought have you thought about what your essence is for life first of all mm. is there no mm. any other place that does does me better than nigeria i said any other place i said the, the grass is only greener where you water it the nigerian mm -hmm. that you're running away from is working for some people the nigerian that you're running away from those people outside americans are coming to to invest billions in the same nigeria mm -hmm. chinese are coming to invest billions in the same nigeria um, mm -hmm. um lebanese are coming to invest billions in the same nigeria so mm -hmm. nigeria is how you perceive it and how you want it to affect you i am i've been affected nigeria to the last core it as in to the point of poverty and everything and mm -hmm. i'm grateful to god for sustaining my life that nigeria did not happen to me you understand what i'm saying it, it it's, it's we cannot be living by the hoping and wishing it's not going to be bad it can be bad anywhere okay mm -hmm. uh, somebody just shared a testimony uh, a situation with me today a girl just moved to canada two months ago and she got raped raped in canada they went to canada she has not been raped in nigeria this day, but she's raped in canada that's so, right does that mean america cannot happen to you does that mean that europe cannot happen to you do you understand what I'm saying? That's that, yeah. So if That's you're not, if you're not out for it, you, everything, mm. you just have to be prayerful. And where you are at the moment, God put you here for a reason. He, he, he did not yeah. make a mistake. He did not make a mistake. Yeah. See, you might be a yeah. Nigerian, but you, are, you, are, you, are, you can also be a global citizen. Mm. You know what I'm God, mm. God, 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 That's what people know. What, Go make them born in Nigeria. Go just say Nigeria is your, your, your limit. Oh. Nigeria is not your limit. Stop, stop looking at Nigeria mm -hmm. as the problem of you. You are your problem. Focus on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Nigeria it will be continue to be Nigeria, but you need to stand out from Nigeria. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You have to stand yes. out. Nigeria is not your limit. You are bigger than Nigeria. Go say mm -hmm. the that is in you is bigger than what is outside. That means that an mm -hmm. individual soul is bigger than mm -hmm. the entire earth. Mm -hmm. By virtue of manifestation. Yes. Yes, I you agree cannot, with you. We cannot allow our minds to be shrunk by the mm. things that are happening. Evil is not going yes. anywhere. Neither is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Neither is good. People That's have been dying before we are born, and people have been great before we are born. Evil and good are mm -hmm. going to exist. What we are praying to God for is that it's a balance. We can't thrive yes. in the world where evil is more than good. We can't. Yes. For those yes, of us that I are agree. alive, we're not better than those that are gone. And for those of yeah. those, uh, and for those of those that, that are alive, we need to do better. Yeah. And seeing those that have gone as a reminder that we are also going closer to our grave. Every yes. one of us are going to die. We all are going to die. Like, we should just realize it. Mm -hmm. We are going to die. So the fact that... Nobody's making out alive. <laughs> yeah, the fact that tomorrow is presented and you, you see tomorrow... Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. You can't waste it on yeah. worrying about something you cannot control. There are some things we cannot yeah. control. That's we all. cannot control. I am grateful to That's God all. that I gave birth to my two kids in Nigeria by cesarean operation. Mm -hmm. This is something that everybody dreads. But God helped me to have an amazing doctor. Two of my uh, my, my my kids, back to back C C CS, in the same Nigeria, not even in a popular hospital, not even in the biggest hospital. It's just a hospital that was dedicated to human life. Not even a big, some of these mm. big name hospitals are doing wars. My father was, was a victim of a big name hospital. After spending over almost 400,000 there on, on make, trying to do, do his check, make sure he's fine. They say he's fine. It's a small hospital that said, this thing that, that, that killed your father, he's been in his, in his blood for months. Why would you take him to this particular hospital that has more equipment than us and they did not see it? That is a mm. basic thing set for in an old man's body. Like if in an old man's blood, this is the sepsis is one of the things that you need to search for because it is common for old age but 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 i, I took my, my father to what i consider the best of the two and mm. he didn't see it and he died because he didn't see it mm. amazing thank you so much that's that i'm so sorry uh, about that yes. thank you no, for sharing no, no, that I, i'm just saying that that's look nigeria, everybody out here nigeria is hard america is hard now, some Americans are trying to go out of America, some live in America. Some Canadians are running out of Canada. Some Europeans are running out of Europe. Some, some uh, Indians are coming to Nigeria to live and say it's a better place for them. Some mm -hmm. Chinese are, are seeing this place as a better place. The better place mm -hmm. is here. Is here. Is here. Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. And if who you are requires you to go out mm -hmm. of the country, you will go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if who you are requires you to go out of the country, I'm not saying limit yourself here. If who you mm -hmm. are requires you to be out mm -hmm. there, you will go out mm -hmm. there. Yes.
and, yeah. and, and the manifestation of your purpose would yes. also come to fore. Which you know, that's what I tell people yes. to come to fore. So um, going back to our first conversation, and that's because it's the recorded thing, uh, which is domestic violence. Yeah. You know, as it relates to women, I know the, a couple of women you know, commented, which made me realize that we have some women who are also going through their own challenges. Yeah. Um, on this show, please, you know, being um, a respected image in the society, can you just kindly encourage these women who manage abusive partners? because they are scared to leave. Can you just kindly say some words to them? Because we need people like you <laughs> with this ongoing situation right now, for real. Like you said, being bored when we go, tomorrow we're gonna to pick another person. Yep. But there are people who don't have being boss kind of public persona. We don't yep. hear about them. Yeah. They don't have the access to technology. They don't have people to speak for them. They might be on this show right now, just contemplating, should I go, should I not? Where do I start from? Please encourage them in your own thoughts. I'll give you, I'll give you two scenarios for those of you listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The turning point of my life mm -hmm. okay. took place when I was 15 years old. I was in a cab, mm -hmm. sent on an errand mm -hmm. by my own mother. To mm -hmm. get police to arrest somebody that she did something wrong to. And when mm. I was in that cab, the cabman said something to me. He said, mm. you are 15 now. Your mama, your mama, they send you some kind of message where they're wrong. Because you are underage now, you will, not be, you, will not, you will not receive the bullet for what she's doing. But there will be an age that you get to. That as your mama, they do the bad, they will come carry you. I got down from the cab that day, and that's how I ran away. Because I knew, I already knew that the lifestyle that my after the divorce of my parents, that the lifestyle my mom see was living was not favorable too. It was toxic. She was a traumatized divorcee, living alone with the mental health issues that she had from the trauma of being divorced, not knowing how to manage that. With so many other things mm. I saw with her mind, and she's raising children, and we are seeing that do irrational things, which are going to form our own core behaviors later on in life. And I realized mm. that, and I had to run away from that, and that changed the course of my life forever, to the point whereby I was, I told, I went, when I was running away, I told her, I, I sent a message to the person that was saying, your mother is doing for you. I said, if I don't run now, you will not have anybody to take care of you later. I would rather run now so that there is a child to take care of you later, and I will be able to find a life different from this, a path different from this. Mm -hmm. So what I told myself before I got my divorce is I had to ask God, God, what is my purpose on this earth? Is it this man? Or the purpose that I have on this earth, this man was supposed to align with it. And I thought so. And let's just say I made a mistake by choosing the wrong person. Or maybe it's the right person at the wrong time. Whatever case it be, that this is where I am now. This is where I am now. And I don't think you created me to die for nothing. Marriage is a nuclear reactor for two aligning forces, not for one person's glory. No. No. So if your if your if your thought process right now sits on the pedestal of how you look because you are married that you marry for the wrong reasons in the first place. And only you can carry your Only you mm. can carry your person. As a woman, you are the one creation that was created without a need, but you were created as a need for somebody else. You were created as a help mate. That means a woman can survive by herself. It's a man that can't survive properly without a woman. So, your entire existence is to favor a man. Meaning, when you stand alone, you are favor standing alone. You are favor on mm. the world. That is why mm. the, men, the, the, the men of God that have cracked this code, I said, if only but women knew who, what value they have, they would not be begging men to love them. They will not be begging men's attention to validate that they are beautiful, called, or are something. 
And when I realized that, I realized that, mm. okay, I have been an enabler to my partner. And he's not even seeing me as a source of inspiration to become better. Instead, society has wired him to see me as a competition that he must be. And I said, if I need him to be the best of him, I need to stay away from him. And if I want to find my purpose, so I need to. So I didn't leave because of hate. I left because of love. I love him. I, love him. I can't hate him. But if I want to see the best of who he is, okay. I need him to grow as a man. I need to step away. I need to step away. Because I've come to shunt his growth because my being is not even is not is it does not have the capacity to see my being as a plus he's seeing it as a struggle he needs to catch up with that's not that's not that's not that's not it that's not that's not, that's not the kingdom agenda can be coming home and be, and be seeing me as a as a struggle he needs to he needs to compete with not a tool he needs to use to go out there and if we are not seeing that what are we wasting our time for we're not only wasting our time we're wasting god's time Mm. There's an yeah. agenda for every marriage. There's a purpose mm. for every marriage. And the kingdom and the generation that needs to come as the as the kingdom children for that marriage is supposed to manifest what God wants for the next generation. Why should I waste my time on that? You think it's about our emotions and our, our jolly good feeling? Get out now. Mm. It's not serving the purpose of who you are as a human being. Mm. 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 And you don't need to get out and be all over the place, don't be bitter and all of that. You don't need to. You don't need to. No. And it's time people it's, it's don't violent. understand. <laughs> Nobody needs to understand. You need to understand your purpose in life. Yes. And focus yes. on that. And if that man yes. is truly meant for you, and somehow your path have crossed wrongly, why have you mm. thought you make it cross back? But the same way I might be the one where you tune out well. Sometimes separation is all you need. If you don't go, yes. go yes. apart. Coming back together, you don't even respect each other's agenda and al alignment. Sometimes we even mm. block them from growing because we are we are Mrs. Fix it. We want to be the ones who help them do everything. How would they grow? Project. How would they even grow? So Project. sometimes we said it in the beginning. <laughs> Leave. Leave. When you when you want to when you, when when do you hey, let me just ask you a question. You said something. Yeah. What do you think what changes? Because yeah. as an ambitious woman, as a power woman, as a career woman. These men know that you are going somewhere. Yeah. They see the prospect. They see the drive. Why then do they get into the marriage and want to slow you down? And that the same thing they admire in you and they, becomes a problem. I didn't get it. And they, let me explain something to you. The person who always slow you down, you are not going to the same place. You are not going to the same place. Mm -hmm. That's our problem. Powerful. When we were... When we were joining with them, we were admiring how they were admiring us, and they were admiring what they were seeing from our outside. But we did not question mm. whether we were going to the same place. We always stood mm. in the bust of admiration. And uh, we, the career women, we also have our childhood trauma, abandonment trauma. issues. I have mm. abandonment issues from having to be a parent too early in life when my parents divorced. I had to be a parent. So I don't even understand what being loved is because I always had to give. So anybody that gives me attention and love, I say, oh my God, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. And I give it to the person. Do you get what I'm saying? Because we also have that mm. abandonment mm. issue. So your trauma mm. makes you also act certain ways. You can't blame yourself for that. You can't blame yourself when you have an emotionally, uh, uh, emotionally um, um, uh, unavailable parent. You understand? They might be there giving you your basic mm. life needs, mm. but emotionally, are they mm. there? Mm. You, you, we grew up in an environment whereby if you do not achieve a house chore or do something right mm. at home, nobody call, nobody says they love you. The only time you hear a mother or dad in a, a Nigerian home is when he does house chores right. And your parent doesn't just look at you and say, you're just a beautiful child. I just love you. You don't even need to do anything. But mm. in Nigeria, we have to win our parents validation by going to go and do something to earn it so most of the time that's why mm -hmm. sometimes we give men more than they they deserve we keep giving mm -hmm. and every time they don't give us back we give more then it becomes mm -hmm. it becomes an, an entitled uh, a, a scenario a man who already wants mm -hmm. to be with you ready to give 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 you understand you don't even yes. need to give you will be wondering what in the apple self do you get what i'm saying but until then <laughs> i pray to god to open our eyes and get clarity and allow us, you yes. know, the men, you know, the kind of men that we're being raised, raised nowadays, or even the ones that are already there who are getting insight in life to understand that 
a woman is not a competition. Neither should women groom themselves to look like they need to compete for equality. You don't need to. You don't need to. It's be, you're trying to be defensive when you're trying to prove that a woman can, a woman can. You already made as favor. God has already made you the anointing on top of a man's head so that his head can mm. move right. That's why they say a woman is the neck, mm. man is the head. If the neck not mm. it's, it's, it's going to be stuck. The neck is the one that is going to be going like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Now the neck, will help out. now the neck will be the control, go, 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 go. But the head is what he sees. But your hair now, yeah. so it is the responsibility that comes between the head. And the woman is supposed to be the oil to that responsibility. Help mm. it go smoothly. Help it go smoothly. You understand? Mm. So, this is this is this is powerful. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's been amazing. Look, everybody starting to breathe, breathe, breathe in the tongue. <laughs> you know, Kathy, I see you. That's a human Kathy. Yeah, she's had a busy day. We could go on and on. But I am going to post this on my page. Hopefully, Instagram would allow me. The past few weeks, I've not been able to post my live too. However, it is also going to be available on my YouTube channel. So you can follow me on YouTube. If that is the way. On YouTube to watch it there. Please follow Kathy. Um, she has a book, I like the car, right? Kathy, yes, yes, and yes. also available on Amazon. <laughs> Get the book, everything she has said to me. The issue is tough, oh, the issue is tough. That's all of my, 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 all she won that title. You would read everything in that book. Believe me, those are some of the books we need to read. Sometimes, understand people's sowing seed days, not just their harvest days. So when you see Kathy now, you're saying, oh, there were days this woman was sowing. Those Thank people so days. <laughs> those rugged man video days. <laughs> yeah, so there's more to all of us. There's more to all of us. I want all your viewers to understand that there's more to all of us and we all yes. have weaknesses yes. that we need to embrace don't fight yes. your vulnerable side don't fight your weaknesses yes. they lead yes. you to a place of learning like I've, I've had my like when it comes to the emotion I'm, I'm strong everywhere but when it comes to emotions i'm still learning i'm still learning and i'm learning and i'm learning and i'm unlearning because i want to get it right i'm i'm, 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 I'm in fact, nowadays i just study man and man behavior like university do you know why do you know why no no no, no. we laugh at this thing but let me tell you why let me tell you why let me tell you why mm -hmm. when you want to achieve career progress what do you do you went to primary mm -hmm. school you went to secondary school you went to university mm -hmm. you look for consult mm -hmm. you study every single step that got you to where you are today what makes us mm -hmm. think that when you now want to choose a man you should not leave it to chance your whole life Ah, Auntie, I'm studying. I have done emotional and intelligence courses. I have done understanding the male gender courses. I have done the clinical and psychological courses. Um, <laughs> the power of manipulation, manipulating power, father. Um, if you meet a narcissist, how to identify them? Um, emotionally avoidant human beings. Um, who, 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 I did learn everything. You got to, you got to study man because now man, you want to live with man. You want to study man. But you want to be a dancer, you study dance. You want to be a med medical doctor, you study medicine. But you want to be mine, you don't study man. You want to be a woman, you don't study woman. You just say, let her just come. Like, God, God, give me my boas. God, let God bless me with the best woman in the world. No, the best woman in the world is the one who water the garden to get. You can't get, you can't just get hard. You go work hard, you go like this. You go work hard. I know, I know. So, um, Kathy, I hear you. You will be expecting to get married at some point in the future again. Ah, yes, this very soon. No, I don't understand. I don't understand. You hey, okay, hey, oh my god. Me, I can't know that. It's out there somewhere. You're watching me. Ah, you hey, wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding on the way. Do, 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 we need as I'm no, sorry no, everyone. No, 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 um, no, no, no. I, I'm not looking at me. I'm not looking at me. I'm I'm a fine go hey God. Hey, oh, God. You see? You see? This is the energy and, and I'm speaking to every single mom on this platform right now. This is the energy. You see this energy yes. of Kathy? She's focusing on her focus. She's focusing on her joy. She's intentionally and consciously putting herself in a state of happiness. So yes, listen, no. when those judgmental people, all those judginas in the society want to come and weigh you down, listen, let them go. Leave trash for Loma. 
they are not yes, your sir. business. The people who don't understand your family, don't yeah. go through yeah. Shalaya yeah. Sri. You are who you have. Take care of yourself. Look, yes, yes. take care of yourself. Don't look like, like your look, problem. Look, in fact, even your ex should be, should be hoping that, hey, why did I leave her? Look good. I'm a 42 year old sexy mama looking like 30, 30 something. 30 something. My sister, what, what, you don't look 42. Do you understand? You don't look, you don't look 42 oh, at all. Oh, you don't God. look 42. Yes, Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody has one to their students. I finished this free. Yes. I finished this free. Like I said, you know, happy. I'm, I'm, you know, just before you go, I would love to also feature you okay. um, on my guide and newspaper collab. Yes. 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 Okay, so that we can talk about your book and your, okay. you know, dance, uh, you know, academy. I'd be happy if you oblige us to, you know, feature you on my column. Yeah. Um, because I have a community of over 150,000 women on Facebook. And I would love for these women to not only read your story, but be inspired by it to understand that you've been through a journey. You are going through another phase now. Yes. Because I know this single motherhood. Is new Ooh, to you. So. <laughs> um, just so you carry them along in the journey. I mean, I've 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 been on this for seven years, and wow. to see you this way at this stage, I'm truly inspired. And I wish that a lot of people have folks like you around them. Yes. When they are going through those dark moments. Yes, because yes. people don't see the dark moments. People don't see those moments. I you have are dark moments. Please, guys. I have dark moments. The only problem is with darkness that I am light. So when the dark moment comes, it cannot last. That's why I say mm. when it comes, mm -hmm. God said, though you shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, though, means it is, it is coming. The valley yes. of the shadow of death is coming. He said, even yes. though you walk through the valley yes. of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, because no, my rod evil. and thy staff, they comfort me. So thy yes. rod is going to shape you in that darkness in case I'm making a mistake. And the staff will do what? <laughs> lead you out of it and comfort you. Why? Because there's yes. a table prepared for you in the presence of mm. your enemies. You understand? Mm. And after mm. you go to that thing where the enemies are, it is after that he now does what? Anoints your head with oil. And your cup oh, starts okay. to overflow. So you can see it's a process. Mm. Let's just go this there. woman, you can say you saw that uh, you will not consider a job like a somebody job. So I am already in that. Let me tell you, we are kingdom warriors for God. We are what they call God undercover, yeah. undercover preachers. Let's let me tell you, we might not be on the pulpit, but the world is our pulpit. Mm. Everywhere we go is a pulpit for us. Yes. We don't need to be in church before yes. we preach church. Church is inside of us. You understand? Yes. And I stand speaking yes. gallantly. As a kingdom woman, do you get what I'm saying? Everything hey. about this kingdom, hey. I'm, I'm telling you. So let's go there. You people, we did not plan this. So believe me, this is what happens when you have a person who has a force of positive energy on your show. Believe me, the universe is just doing its thing. Yeah. You know, I'm very careful for meditation and everything. And I know that when I see energy, that aligns, you know, I fight with it. So the energy you brought up my show today, Kathy, I say thank you so much. We need it. I do not take it for granted. I know it's been a very, very easy day for you. Thank you everyone for joining. Follow my YouTube channel, SI Joere, follow Kathy, buy a book, support us. Because beyond what we represent as women, we are mothers raising children. Yes, so okay. when you support us, it's an encouragement to keep going. That we have people like you out there who understand. You might not know the way it looks like on the inside, but you see what we see. You see on the outside. Effort supporting. Don't be trolls. Don't come on our pages and drop negativity. Eh? Please. Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, just show people lights before you go. Just light, uh, a little bit of light. Whatever comes to your mind. Whatever comes to my mind. Um, what uh -huh. comes to my what comes to my mind is. Uh -huh. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And joy That's doesn't mean no, joy doesn't mean there is no unhappiness. Joy and happiness are mm -hmm. two different things. Happiness is an emotional state, chemically induced emotional state. Joy is mm -hmm. knowing that there's trouble, but you know that you're mm -hmm. good. Yes. You are seeing trouble, but you know yes. that you're good. Yes. And draw strength from yes. that. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. That's that's what I'll say. Thank you, Queen. God bless you. My love to the children. I'm going to connect with you in the DM.
for okay. those who want to get our book once again go to the link the link tree on our page bio yeah. and buy it on amazon all right kathy have a beautiful evening god bless you once again and please we hope to see more of your positive energy out there <laughs> i will thank you god bless all you right, have a good one bye bye, <laughs> bye everyone